Hello and welcome to AutoInform How To Workshop. My name is Frank Massey. In this issue, I'd like to look at integrity testing of induction systems. One problem we often come across has, in effect, a multitude of causes. I've spoken in the past about evaluation of air mass meters and problems with EGR valves, air leaks and the effect on fuel trim. All of these issues stem from one core responsibility, that the air intake system whether it be atmospheric air intake or forced air induction with the use of a turbo has to be integrally secure. In other words, no leaks. Also, there has to be no internal leaks and in particular, I'm focusing on EGR operation. So for this feature, what I'd like to do is demonstrate the use of the smoke machine. We've had some excellent results. It's never failed to identify a fault, but I'd like to actually show the process through which we use this tool, not just simply the connectivity, that's fairly straightforward, but perhaps how to be a little bit more intuitive in the application of the tool. So, first of all, this particular tool has effectively three main features. The most obvious one is that it creates smoke. Now, for the purpose of this, if I remove the nozzle, momentarily. I'm just going to give the, the heater circuit um, a short while. Within this chamber is a very light oil. We've added a UV uh, dye to it for the added feature of the fact with a UV lamp it helps identify very discrete leaks across gasket faces and flanges which normally would be very difficult um, to determine. The other point I would make also is, just taking a step back from the machine for a moment, the environment you operate the machine in. We're in an enclosed workshop, the door is closed, there is no draft. With very, very discreet leaks, it's possible that a draft may draw away evidence of the leaking smoke. However, you do normally get an odour from the, from the oil. So, um, just be careful if it's um, a particularly complex vehicle where perhaps access from the entire vehicle structure isn't possible without the use of a ramp say that you keep it out of a, a draft environment. So back to the machine we have a light oil in a chamber that has an electrically heated element driven by battery power. It's a timed out heater so eventually the heater will trip out and you can engage it, re-engage it any time at all. That provides a fine powder smoke under a small pressure. It's about half a, half a PSI, 0.5 PSI. It's not a high pressure, but given the fact that when you fill a cavity, and in our case it's the entire intake system, you may hear in the background a, a, a squeal or a noise. The ignition is on, the APP sensor, accelerator pedal position, is depressed, therefore the throttle is being driven and is wide open because I want to smoke this engine from the earliest opportunity of air intake, which in my case is right after the air uh, cleaner assembly, right through the entire induction system, including the turbo and the intercooler. So that's the circuit I'm testing. Eventually, that pressure, half a PSI, will leak into the exhaust system, where it will expand and lose any pressure. Be careful interpreting leaks in the exhaust system because often it doesn't show up. We have had two occasions when a cracked manifold, exhaust manifold, didn't show up because of the pressure drop. However, you can reverse the process and feed smoke from the back of the car forwards and blank the intake off, in which case you would find it. You can also blank off the back of the exhaust system and maintain pressure in everything from the intake from the air cleaner right through the exhaust right to the tailpipe so all things are possible. So that nozzle fits in our case into a conical adapter I have a similar adapter here that's one of the basic tools if you've got a, a suitable round inlet orifice that works quite nicely there are a number of devices of different shapes and sizes that also can be used to seal or blank off um, a hose or a fitting. What we're actually attempting to do is to provide an inlet into the induction system at a point that would reach everywhere. 
Um, so the inlet manifold is an obvious one. In our case, we've got to the, the main air intake, which is fine. But any opportunity of putting pressure into an engine and pressure, pressurizing the entire induction system is what we're aiming for. With diesel, this is obviously petrol, uh, with diesel, there is often little opportunity. And what I often suggest is locate a suitable part of the intake manifold with enough wall thickness, drill and tap it, put a brake bleed nipple in there, and then provide your smoke into that uh, aperture. And when you're finished, just cap it off and leave it sealed. So there's no problem, it's, it's fairly easily done. Back to the machine. Oil, which is now quite warm. We have a gauge which measures pressure. And the first thing we want to do is check the accuracy of the device itself. Proof test. Simply clamp the pipe, turn, you notice the heater's just dropped out, re-engage the heater, turn the volume valve fully on, pressure has risen, and if we take a reading, 0.4 of a PSI, 0.6, it's just under 0.5 of a PSI with zero leakage. Additional to the pressure, we have a manometer. And you'll notice that the indicator is securely at the base of the manometer, which proves zero flow. You can have a situation where you have minimal flow, which will not be registered on the gauge, but will show flow on the manometer. So that is a more accurate means of detecting very discrete leaks. Let me try and demonstrate. If I open the tube out fully, the ball shoots up to the top. We have some pressure drop because we're actually charging now the induction system. But if I play about with this, you can see I can cause the manometer to rise and fall. And this demonstration might be best done actually whilst you watch the smoke to give you some idea just how discreet these leaks are. If I open up the pipe very carefully, you will not observe any pressure drop, but what I expect you to observe is the manometer rising. So I'm just going to open it until we get some smoke. Now I've got to the point there where there's no longer any pressure drop on the gauge, but you can see I can now play about with the manometer. You can see the manometer is rising and falling, and there's no change to pressure, indicating that we do have flow. So what I'm suggesting is that the manometer is the more accurate means of detecting very subtle flow changes. We'll come back to that manometer in a moment, because we use that with great effect. So back in, heater's on, I want to fully charge the system. You will get pressure drop because it's now filling up the cavity, which is a fairly large space. And by the way, this vehicle is unknown, by, by, by which I mean I've brought it from the workshop, from the commercial workshop, purely as an opportunist moment uh, to, to film. So the results of this are unknown, but interestingly, we do now have a problem. So let's come back to that in a moment. We have a reasonable pressure. It's about 0.4, just under half a PSI. That is a good result. When you see the manometer rising and falling, it's building up pressure, it's escaping past one or more open exhaust valves into the exhaust system, then building up pressure. So that is a good result. If the manometer ball occupies its movement between the center portion of the manometer, that is a good result. Anything above that, if that ball were to rise consistently above that, whether you've got pressure drop or not, you have flow. Now I would interpret that as an internal leak. In the absence of any external smoke, there will be an internal leak somewhere. But we have, where you can see this on camera, we have a leak from that breather hose. 
Now the symptoms of this car under test were that we were losing a small amount of turbo boost. Not a lot, about 0.2 of a bar. So clearly there is an issue with that. And of course that needs rectifying before we conduct further testing. In other words, there could be other leaks as well. But I think it's pretty obvious that the advantage of using smoke is that it not only proves there is a leak, but directs you to exactly where the leak is. And often some of these leaks are very difficult to determine. Going back to the application of the tool, I've turned that off because we've found a leak, so we need to resolve that. EGR valves. Quite often, an EGR valve that has a subtle fault whereby it's passing gases when it shouldn't, when it's closed, often results in no pressure drop. Whereas the manometer often detects that there is flow from the circuit, the circuit being the vehicle. And of course, what happens in the EGR valve, you pressurize the intake system, but the EGR is partially open, therefore it diverts itself straight into the exhaust system. So the escape route, if you like, is much easier to, to accomplish. Because of that, and depending on the nature and severity of the fault with the EGR, depends on how quickly that ball will rise. But I would say that the manometer, the value of that manometer, is in detecting very subtle internal leaks with enclosed uh, crankcase breather systems and uh, EGR circuits. This particular vehicle uh, does have a history of problems with the turbo wastegate control valve, the N75 valve. We have, however, this has just come from the workshop, we have modified that valve already because we're aware of that fault uh, and we've resolved that. But that is also an internal leak from the turbocharge um, recirculation system. So these internal leaks are often the more difficult to find. And of course that would be a matter of working through all of these circuits to determine which is causing the flow from the manometer. So three important aspects of the machine, visible smoke, pressure drop, and manometer flow. An additional advantage, add some UV dye to the oil and when there is a leak past a component, once the smoke has uh, evaporated or, or um, um, gone into the atmosphere, there will be a residue of UV dye on the component and just go around and, and check with the UV lamp. But of course, obviously you need to be able to, to visually see these areas. And with most engines today, I think they'll appreciate the manifold is quite complex and very difficult to actually visibly see all around it. Keep it out of a windy environment, block the back of the exhaust up if you have to, isolate certain parts of the circuit if you have to individually, like the intercooler circuit or the manifold circuit, by removing pipes and blanking off different apertures. So there's a, there's a whole range of possibilities when using this tool. It's been very successful for us. Um, we've always found a fault uh, and been able to rectify it without too much downtime. So I um, thoroughly recommend the process of using smoke detection. That concludes the, the presentation on how to uh, induction system testing and fits very nicely with other features we've covered uh, like EGR testing, air mass meter testing uh, and indeed turbo evaluation. It's something we, we do recommend at a very, very early stage in your process of, of diagnosing faults. So I hope you found this of interest and I look forward to seeing you in the very near future.